Hi. Welcome to Prime Recap. After finding a mysterious egg on the beaches of Scotland, a boy is tasked with protecting an unknown creature from the clutches of hunters. Today we will recap the story of the movie, The Water Horse, from 2007. In a pub in Scotland, two young tourists become interested in a photo of the Loch Ness Monster. After overhearing their conversation, a gentleman tells them that the photo is a fake, but he will tell them the true story behind the legend. At the time of the Second World War, a boy named Angus McMorrow admires the famous lake. He was fascinated by the water, but very afraid of it. One day, he decides to enter the river and slowly wades into its waters. Suddenly, the boy is sucked under. As he struggles, several people watch him drown, yet no one does anything to help him. In reality, the boy never had the courage to enter the lake and all this happened only in his imagination, creating all this drama. While searching for shells on the ground, the young man remembers that his father always said that everything on the beach has magic. He then pulls out an oval stone from inside the lake, and then is interrupted by McMorrow, his mother. After arriving home, Angus goes to the garage, where he keeps a calendar and a photo of his father. He marks the days on the calendar, eagerly counting down to his father's return from military service. Without delay, the boy cleans the oval stone and is surprised when pieces come out of the object, as if they were the shell of an egg, revealing something blue lit from the inside. However, he is interrupted by Anne, who demands that the boy return indoors. After Angus leaves, the egg mysteriously moves. Before going to sleep, the young man looks at the photo of his father, when he notices a strange noise coming from the garage. In the middle of the storm, he rushes to the place to check the sound. Upon entering the workshop, the child is faced with eggshells scattered on the floor. Suddenly, a movement coming from the middle of the mess catches his attention, and something hides in the shadows. Even in fear, the boy approaches cautiously. The storm and lightning further increase his fear of what may lie ahead, until he comes across a bizarre creature hiding behind the plants. As he tries to approach the animal, Angus is surprised by a ferocious bite. However, he manages to deftly dodge it, avoiding a serious injury. After that, the boy goes to the kitchen to find some fruit for his new friend. When he returns to the garage, Angus feeds him and gradually gains the confidence to pet him. When the animal turns around, the young man notices a deep cut on its back. With determination, he holds the animal and begins to bandage it, despite the intense pain this causes the creature, which writhes in discomfort. The next day, the boy gets out of bed suddenly, stunned by the sound of honking horns. Looking out of the window, he and his family are surprised by several army trucks parked in front of their house, which reminds the boy of his father. Anne introduces herself to the soldiers, she claims that she is just the housekeeper of the house, which belongs to Lord Killen. However, in the absence of the owner, the woman is in charge of receiving the soldiers at the residence. As dozens of men settle into the house, Angus learns that the Germans are advancing further and further into Scotland. The boy then picks up two books from the library and heads to the garage. When he arrives, he is confronted with a tremendous mess, caused by his new pet who is now destroying a pair of boots. After realizing that the animal is just hungry, the young man goes to the pantry of the house. In the kitchen, he is surprised by an angry dog named Churchill, who belongs to Sergeant Strunk. After that, the man demands that Angus present a formal authorization, only then he can take food. Quickly, the boy claims that he is only going to take out the garbage, taking the kitchen garbage can with him. When he arrives at the garage, he notices that the place is empty and silent. Suddenly, the creature jumps into the garbage can and starts devouring everything with voracity. While examining a book, Angus is inspired by the title and decides to call the animal, Crusoe. Curious to find out if the animal is male or female, the boy begins to search his books for bizarre creatures. Then the boy remembers his father's stories about a huge monster that sometimes appeared in the sea and sometimes in the lake. When he realizes that Crusoe has eaten all the garbage too quickly, the young man tries to grab it, but he can't because he is suddenly attacked. After the brief contact with the animal, Angus notices that its skin is extremely dry. Concerned about the animal's well-being, he improvises a swimming pool using the trash can. During a fishing trip, Huey and Jimmy come across soldiers searching for something in the mountains, the fishermen believe the officers are investigating German submarines. At the army base, Captain Hamilton informs his subordinates that this is actually the front line of the war, where the enemy will strike first due to the depth of the lake. The army intends to let German U-boats invade the lake and once they succeed, they will raise the steel net to trap the enemies in place. As Crusoe swims in his pool, Angus notices a movement outside the garage. He quickly makes his way to the front of the house, and comes across one of the men bragging about having hunted down a poor buck. In a village pub, Jimmy learns that the soldiers have heavy weapons on base, capable of sinking a submarine. 
Meanwhile, Anne goes into the garage and comes across her son's investigations into the war. Hearing footsteps, the woman is surprised by Louis, the new house helper. Immediately, she orders him to clean up the place and get rid of the animal her son is hiding. Angus then comes across the man disposing of Crusoe's pool, leaving him worried. The helper claims that the workshop is now his, and that the poor boy will no longer be allowed in there. After that, the boy desperately goes out in search of the lost creature. Inside the house, the animal is looking for food when suddenly it hears barking and Churchill runs in a flurry after it. Just as the dog is about to chomp him, the reach of his rope ends, wreaking havoc on the table to which the rope was attached. While searching for Crusoe, Angus is surprised by screams coming from the bathroom. After arriving at the place, he finds the creature in the bathtub and his sister, Kirsty McMorrow, desperate about the situation. After the boy begs, the girl assures him that she will not tell anyone anything. In the morning, Anne heads to the garage carrying a pile of her husband's clothes. As she enters, she asks Louis to fix the guest bathroom and hands him the clothes. The man asks if Angus's father won't need the clothes when he returns home, and Anne confesses that her husband will never come back, as the ship he was on was sunk by the Germans long ago. Only her son holds out hope of seeing him again. Before leaving the scene, the woman comes across a gruesome scar on Louis' back. In the bathroom, Kirsty manages to gag Crusoe so he won't make any more noise. However, the critter gets loose and starts making a fuss just as Louis emerges in the hallway, demanding to come in to fix the toilet. Then the man enters the place and the brothers try to hide Crusoe, but he dodges to the side, causing the subject to be frightened at the sight of the animal. Fascinated, he tries to touch the creature, but is viciously attacked. After that, Louis reveals that the animal resembles a water horse, a legendary animal that supposedly lays only one egg before dying, leaving the young orphaned. As such, there is only one of this species in the world. During the conversation, the three are interrupted by Anne who calls for her children outside. Quickly, Angus asks the helper to keep it a secret and then the two young siblings go to the door to stop their mother. However, the woman walks past the children and upon entering the premises, she comes across the empty bathtub and Louis fixing the toilet. Suddenly, the creature lifts the toilet lid, but the man manages to close it before Anne realizes. Crusoe continues to make noise, which forces the helper to claim he has a stomach ache to justify the weird sound. After that, he scolds the animal for disobedience. The man then suggests to the boy to let the monster live in the sea so that it can eat and grow freely, but the young man is not sympathetic to this idea. During dinner, Angus hides in the bathroom to feed his friend, when Kirsty calls him in to see something amazing. Leaving Crusoe alone, he tries to reach the sardine can and ends up slipping out of the tub. Soon after, the animal finds the door open and takes the opportunity to leave the bathroom, while Churchill is loose out there. During his walk through the house, Crusoe is surprised by the dog, which leaves the poor animal with no way out. Desperate, he clumsily makes his way down the stairs and the dog follows right behind, wreaking havoc wherever they go. At the end of the stairs, the creature comes across several stuffed animals and bizarre horns, causing him to become frightened, yet he continues to flee from Churchill, and now the boy also joins the chase. At dinner, Anne hears a noise, but the captain believes it is just the ghosts in the house. However, the escape continues and the noises get louder and louder, drawing the attention of the adults. After wreaking havoc in several rooms of the house, the chase reaches the dining room. Crusoe sneaks under the table while the dog runs over it, knocking the main course over everyone present. Angus continues to chase the creature, until they emerge outside the residence. Inside the house, Louis comes across a mess that the chase has caused in the dining room, and gets a scolding from Anne for letting it happen. In the garden, the monster pretends to be a statue to escape Churchill. Soon after, he realizes he is next to a fountain filled with fish, so he jumps into the water to feed. After searching tirelessly, Angus is unable to find his friend, so he asks Louis for help as he is forced to go to bed. At dawn, the helper finds Crusoe, who is much larger and barely fits inside the fountain. The man quickly breaks the news to the young man, and together the two head out to sea, carrying the animal in a truck. Along the way, Lewis tells the boy that, according to the legend of the water horse, a lost traveler finds the creature on the beach and asks it for help. However, the fellow does not know how the story ends, whether the beast really helped the rider or dragged him into the depths of the lake. When they arrive at the water's edge, the helper tries to take Crusoe into the lake, but he does not want to move away from the boy. So the man comes up with the idea of throwing scraps of food into the water so that the monster will follow them. He then asks Angus to hide, and he obeys even though his eyes are full of tears. Upon returning to the garage, Lewis is surprised by Hamilton. The captain, in a firm manner, demands that the subject keep his distance from the children in the house, claiming that the employee cannot be trusted. At the lake, 
Huey catches a large fish, and when Jimmy checks it out more closely, he comes across a huge creature. The men are reluctant to let go of the fishing rod, but when faced with the force that drags the boat into the middle of the lake, they give in and cut the line. Soon after, the monster emerges from the waters, leaving the fishermen bewildered by its presence. At the house, Angus is forced to do various chores with the military, from peeling potatoes to polishing the captain's shoes. While at the lake, Crusoe continues to hunt, and cries missing his friend. During his chores, the boy takes advantage of Hamilton's distraction to escape to the lake. Arriving at the place, the boy calls for the creature, and feels guilty for not having visited it before. Without any answer, the young man decides to use a canoe to go to the middle of the lake. Suddenly, he is surprised by the huge animal that appears behind him, even overwhelmed by its size, he hugs his friend. Unexpectedly, Crusoe tries to push the boy away, but the boy decides to jump into the water and hold onto the animal. The creature then struggles, causing the boy to end up riding on its back. In this way, Angus swim quietly with his friend through the waters of the lake. But the creature decides to risk a dive to the depths of the river. This causes the boy to lose his breath and ask to return to the surface. After the young man catches his breath, the monster submerges again, leading the boy to observe the darkness of the lake bottom, littered with ships and wreckage. Suddenly, they come across a net and Crusoe returns to the surface. Outside the water, the net stretches from one side of the passage to the sea to the other. As the sergeant walks with Churchill around the lake, suddenly the dog shoots towards the water. On reaching the beach, the dog encounters Angus and the creature, becomes frightened and hastily flees. However, Sergeant Strunk manages to catch a brief glimpse of the monster before it departs. After he returns to his home, the boy tells Kirsty and Lewis how huge Crusoe is. However, they are interrupted by Anne, who calls the man to thank him for making her children happy after the loss of their father. The woman then questions the origin of the scar on the adjutant's back, and then he tells her that it was just shrapnel from a grenade, from the time when he was part of the navy. Meanwhile, the two siblings listen to the conversation in hiding. In addition to the children, the captain also observes the two talking, and discovers through his soldiers' investigations that Lewis has a clean record. Moreover, the guy was considered a war hero after he left the navy. In the pub, the fishermen tell of their adventure, in which they encountered a giant monster with a crocodile tail. Next to them, a journalist wants to record the news to turn Loch Ness into a famous place, unaware that Lewis hears his plans from a nearby table. The other day, Jimmy takes the reporter to the lake to capture a photo of the animal. Meanwhile, the McMorrow family visits the soldier's base, where they are introduced to the army's powerful weapon. Suddenly, the captain commands a sequence of shots towards the water. When faced with the dangerous situation, Angus despairs, for Crusoe is helpless in the lake. Unable to do anything else, the young man reveals the whole truth to his mother, yet she does nothing and the men continue to fire, causing giant bullets to fall near the creature. Desperate, the boy runs towards the soldiers, but ends up getting a scolding for interfering. After that, he is forced to return home. At the edge of the lake, Jimmy and the reporter are frustrated, as the shots have spooked the animal, preventing them from capturing a real photo. Faced with this, they resort to a trick and fake the photograph using a miniature model of the monster. One night at the lake, Sergeant Strunk flips through the newspaper and comes across a photo of the creature he saw the other day, prompting his colleagues to hunt down Crusoe. Meanwhile, Angus is released from his confinement by Kirsty, so Lewis accompanies him to the lake during the dark of night. After arriving at the beach, the boy calls for the creature and suddenly the monster emerges from the lake trying to snatch his friend. As a result of the army's attacks, Crusoe has become overly aggressive, unable to forget the trauma of the bombs that almost hit him. Even when the boy approaches cautiously, the animal charges at him again, but Lewis manages to push the boy away in time, causing the young man to leave the scene hurt. After that, the soldiers navigate the lake with spears and guns in their hands, in order to hunt the monster. On the outskirts of the beach, Churchill runs towards one side of the river, indicating to Angus and the hunters the possible location of the beast. As the dog barks, Crusoe emerges from the water, causing a great panic. After the barking ceases, the men assume their game has moved on, but suddenly the creature appears before them. Quickly, the soldiers begin their attack, forcing the animal to flee into the water. However, the officers persist in shooting at it. The monster then dives to the bottom of the lake and, gaining momentum, quickly climbs up to capsize the boat, causing everyone to fall into the water. At the house, the captain is warned that there is an attack on the lake, so he demands that Anne's family hide in the basement. After searching for her son, the woman discovers that he is not even in the house. Without thinking twice, she offers to help, even against Hamilton's wishes. During the fight, the enraged creature advances against the sergeant. At the same moment, 
Angus appears on the beach and screams in despair, yet Crusoe catches the soldier and shakes him from side to side. The boy then goes into the water, so one of the soldiers tries to shoot him, but Lewis emerges and advances on the man. However, the helper receives a blow to the head and ends up fainting. Faced with this, the madman again points his gun at the boy, but gives up out of no reason and runs away frightened. As he wades into the lake, Angus sinks lower and lower until suddenly he slips into an abyss. At that moment, the monster releases its prey and rushes to save its friend. After that, Lewis awakens to find the animal holding the fainted boy in its mouth. Carefully, the creature carries him to the beach, where the man tries to give him a massage to get him breathing again. In his thoughts, the boy remembers the day his father left for war, leaving him responsible for looking after the house. After his reveries, Angus expels all the water he had swallowed and gets up, expressing his gratitude to his best friend. However, the animal hides and leaves when it sees a vehicle approaching. As Anne and the captain get out of the car, the boy tries to explain that his monster friend is in danger. However, the woman goes into a hysterical state, accusing them of having come there based on a lie. For her, the real threat is the destruction caused by war. Suddenly, everyone looks in amazement towards the lake. When the woman turns around, she comes face to face with the creature, leaving her perplexed. In response, her son demonstrates how gentle the animal is by stroking it. However, they are interrupted when shells hit the outskirts of the lake. Angus then leads his friend to the side of the dock to ride him. With agility, they ride away towards the lake, causing his mother to despair. As bullets continue to be fired in the direction of the two, the captain tries to warn his subordinates to cease the attack, however, there is no radio signal due to the storm. After a very close shot, the monster ends up toppling over and does a full spin with the boy riding on its back, luckily, he manages to hang on. On the beach, Hamilton and the adults take a boat to get to Angus. The young man then encourages the creature to swim faster towards the sea as the shots come closer and closer. At the soldier's post, the men spot an underwater object invading the site and immediately begin an intense firing sequence. However, they are unaware that the object is actually Crusoe, who narrowly escapes the gunfire. After that, the monster dives to escape the attack, and at the same time, the adults chase him by boat through the turbulent waters. Realizing that the animal is escaping, the soldiers start to lift the net to prevent it from reaching the sea. Faced with this, the boy encourages his friend to pick up speed. However, when they reach the edge of the lake, the net is already up. Crusoe encourages the boy to let him go, so they say goodbye with a heartfelt hug and Angus swims to the boat. After that, the monster returns to the lake with the intention of jumping over the barrier, leaving everyone distressed as the net is too high. After gaining momentum, the creature makes a giant leap, but ends up falling on top of the blockade. Suddenly, the towers supporting the net begin to collapse, allowing the animal to swim freely towards the open sea. At that moment, everyone celebrates his freedom. Angus finally finds the courage to question Anne about his father's return, and she confirms that he will not be returning. Although shaken, the young man accepts this sad reality. Soon after, everyone witnesses Crusoe saying goodbye with one last leap into the sea, as if he is saying thank you and goodbye. After that, the monster was seen by several people on the spot, but the boy never saw it again. In present-day Scotland, the two teenagers thank the gentleman for the story, and then the man reveals his name, Angus McMorrow. In the same region, a little boy walks along the beach and finds a water horse egg. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.